Do you remember the best time to prepare for winter? <laughs> it's not when it has already come. It's back here in the heat of the summer when winter seems completely far away. And the very best time to prepare for a rainy day is when it's sunny. Now, today we're gonna do a little bit of that. I want you to take that illustration and, and apply it in every area of your life because that will make you a good prep stutter. But today, it's just about ready to rain and I have a whole lot of wood that has been around the house waiting for this moment to be sealed up so that it can withstand the harsh rains and summer sun, but especially the, the winter harshness that just kind of really does a lot of harm to those outdoor pieces of wood that you have, like this ladder behind me and these sleds and even the top of this little bird house. I wanna get them sealed up nicely and I've got just the perfect, very simple recipe to share with you in the next few minutes. <laughs> so don't go away. First thing you're going to want to get is some mineral spirits and of course I'm going to encourage you get the odorless mineral spirits because they're going to be a lot easier on your lungs and don't mix this together indoors you definitely want to be clear outside where there isn't any kind of fumes that you're going to have to worry about breathing in. I would also say this the more natural alternative to mineral spirits would actually be turpentine and that's a wonderful wonderful smelling and wonderful product it is more natural, but it does have some drawbacks that I would just encourage you, this is going to be the stronger product for what we need. Also, I'll say that this is not going to do any good to the wood by itself. It is simply the agent that's going to um, penetrate the most deeply and pull in the other ingredients that we mix this with, which the very next <laughs> ingredient that I want you to get is boiled linseed oil. This is what's going to do the good to the wood, but if we used it by itself, the wood surface would end up tacky and sticky on your fingers, and you certainly don't want that, especially on something like this ladder that we're going to seal. So this is gonna be excellent at waterproofing it and conditioning that wood. The last ingredient that we're gonna put on here is uh, paraffin. Now, this is actually, um, the very same thing that your grandma used in canning back in the day and she used it in candle making. I would say that the more natural alternative to paraffin, even though this is just fine to use, would be beeswax. And of course, all of us immediately think, well, yeah, I would want that. It is going to be more expensive and it isn't going to last as long. What I love about our recipe is you'll apply it once each year and forget it. That's all you've got to do. Whereas if you used beeswax, it does tend to break down a little bit more in the heat and cold, and you would need to reapply it more than once per year, potentially. So we're going to be using the paraffin wax. Now, all we've got to do is mix these together, and I've got them all ready. We're going to come up with a little, uh, I've got a pink container that I've used in the past, so it's a little bit soiled already, but it's got clean liners, and I want you to be able to see what we are putting in here. So I'm just gonna put this right out in front of me, and we're gonna start by putting in one quart of the odorless mineral spirits. I'll put it in first, and we just pour it slowly and gently. Uh, it is not very combustible and anything that you need to worry about quite so much like the boiled linseed oil is. The easier way to measure this than my cups is just to use a quart jar. So I've got one of my canning jars from inside and I'm going to just pour it full of the odorless mineral spirits. Right up to the shoulders. Or if you wanted to, you could put four cups if you were using a cup measurement. And we'll pour that in there. Okay. Next, we want four ounces of the boiled linseed oil. Now let me say this is known to be combustible, so you want to just kind of be a little bit careful with it. <laughs> and you definitely don't want the children doing it by themselves. To measure this, we're going to put in exactly four ounces, which comes to half of one cup. And I've got my own little plastic measuring 
cup from inside and I'm just going to pour carefully half of a cup worth. You can see how rich and golden yellow that is. There we go. And I'm going to pour it right in here and we're going to stir these together. It is going to create some heat. You'll notice the reaction as they come together. All right, we've got those stirred together. And the last ingredient we're going to put in this is some paraffin wax. And like I said, it's used in canning and candle making. And when you buy it, it doesn't matter what brand you get, but it comes in these blocks. Sometimes they're a complete block just like this, and sometimes they actually have little indentions to make them easier. I like the ones with indentions so you can easily measure out, but we're gonna use one fourth of this, which is going to be equal to one ounce. If you're not familiar with what a double boiler is, it's actually where you take a pan and put a little bit of water in the bottom to boil, and it separates that upper pan that you have sitting in the top so that the heat does not directly affect it. Let me show you what I mean. This is what I had inside, and this Revereware pan had the bit of water in it that safely heats up the paraffin that's melting above. Paraffin can be a fire hazard, so you want to be careful and not let it um, get out of the pan or get out of hand. We're going to put exactly four ounces, or I'm sorry, one ounce in this recipe, and that's going to be equal to two tablespoons. I've got a little tablespoon measure here, and let me put that in there, and I'm just going to measure out two of those tablespoons. Hold on. The spoon was just a little bit cool, so it was trying to solidify already, but we're going to stir it quickly into this. You definitely want to make this recipe, there we go, when it is warm outside, because if you were to try and make it on a cool day, you're going to notice that uh, that paraffin can solidify pretty quickly in there and make little chunks, and we don't want little chunks. So we're just going to give it a few minutes together in there. You'll notice that the mineral spirits kind of help dissolve the paraffin just a little bit, so uh, a few moments of stirring is going to take care of any of the little bits of chunks that are there, unless it's a really cool day. Then you just need to set it in a very hot windowsill and let the warm heat of the sun kind of work its magic in turning it all into a nice thick golden liquid. Use your best judgment, but in the event that the wood is a little compromised on the surface, you might want to sand it down just a hair so that it's down to stronger, beefier wood. So I want you to go out and get yourself a good paintbrush that you have not used with any other kind of paint. I've got a one coat paintbrush here that has good bristles that are smooth and I'm going to literally just put a nice, generous coat on all of the dried and um, forlorn wood around my property. And the only thing I would suggest that you do to make it more fun is put on some good music <laughs> and go out into the heat and get it done. I'm going to move this ladder out into a well-ventilated area. You're going to want to coat it generously and if you notice, it'll soak in very deep, but once it's soaked in and fully incorporated, you'll know you've got it good and that's all you should need to put on it. And as Noah Bradley, I should, I should give him credit right now, as Noah Bradley says, it will reinvigorate the wood. <laughs> he is the one who I got this recipe from and I wanna encourage you to go over to his website you'll fall in love because it's really fun if you like log cabins. He is at a website called The Handmade House with Noah Bradley. And this is how he seals every bit of what he does around his farm. And some people even condition the blades of their knives with this or metal that might be susceptible to rust or hinges that might be out in the weather. This little bird gazebo needs a little bit of revamping, but at least the cedar shakes and copper edging is going to be so thankful for a drink right now.
it was interesting to find in my research that even old time restorers of antique furniture use a very similar concoction to what we use today. Their ratios are just a little bit different. They actually use equal parts of all three of these. And some of them swap out that paraffin wax for beeswax when they are doing indoor furniture. And it puts a very nice finish on those. It just doesn't hold up so well outdoors. And let me say one other thing to keep in mind, this will darken the wood and that darkness does not go away. So if you have a light colored wood that really needs to stay light, you might just use something like lemon oil or straight beeswax. However, those are not going to hold up quite as well and you might need to do reapplications of those throughout the year. Well, the day is almost done and I have still got more I need to seal up, so I'll do that tomorrow. But I want to give you a challenge. Will you take the time to throw this little recipe together, round up all of the thirsty wood around your house. You'll be amazed at how many wheelbarrows you're going to find and hoes and rakes and ladders that haven't been paid attention to. And they were, are so thirsty and will be delighted to have you give them a good drink of this sealant for both the summer and the winter months ahead. I even like to do the screwdrivers and little woodworking tools. This handle of this hoe and uh, shovels that I've got, they're all getting a full drink of this wonderful sealant that's going to help that wood be reinvigorated for the months ahead. Okay, it's time to be done. And I'm going to go pour myself a large glass of sweet iced tea. And I'm going to sit down and watch the fireflies come out. And I will plan to meet you back here, same time, same place. I hope you'll take the time to meet me. And until then, go out and find someone who needs you and make it a point to be a blessing to them today. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Hey, before you go, I would love to share with you a quick word of scripture. This is out of the Holy Bible and it's Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. So it's the book of Philippians in the New Testament in chapter four and it's verses 11 through 13. He writes this, I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> now go spread the word.